What the hell is this moment in your dating history? Story one. Had to make an account for this. No more lurking. Buddy of mine met a girl in my apartment parking lot, then decided to go on a date with her. When he arrived at her apartment there where cow stains everywhere form her dogs. Sure, everyone with dogs has a couple. But this girl wouldn't take her dogs out, so they just shat in the house normally. After they left, she suggested they go to a waffle house or some cow in the worst area of town. After a slice of what I am sure was the worst pie in the flipping world, she asks him to take her somewhere. He follows her directions. Bam! Planned parenthood. Girl gets a flipping abortion. During the date. After this, while she's explaining how she doesn't know who the father is, she asks to go to Petco. She buys a rat. They arrive back at her house and she replaces a dead rat out of her cage with a new one. She then explains she has to buy a new rat every other week or so because they pass away. My buddy was pretty sure she didn't feed them. Jesus. Abortion date. Beat that. Also, she left him voicemails every day for about two weeks. When he never returned her calls, she left a psycho, we were great together, why would you do this to me message, and finally stopped calling him back. She also didn't feed her animals. He believes she was actually retarded. No second date? Imagine that. Forgive my grammar. Story 2. Met a guy from a dating site. Guy in the photo sort of looked like Kevin Smith. I get to the restaurant and order a drink. I told the waiter I was meeting a blind date, so make it strong one. Guy I meet looks like Mo from the Three Stooges, but much thinner. Same haircut and all. He proceeded to tell me that he lost all of the weight due to medical issues. I did not press further because we were having dinner drinks. He worked at a gaming store, so he took off his overshirt and was wearing a severely stained white undershirt. We are talking yellow pits to the max here. While talking about art, I notice that he keeps scratching his upper arm under the shirt sleeve. He asks if I want to see his tattoo. I say okay. And when he lifts the sleeve, there is a cross tattoo, but his arm is covered in acne, which is what he was scratching picking at. We are at a Tex-Mex place. I order another drink and he orders a meal. He tells the waiter several times that he doesn't want tomatoes. Meal comes, and while talking, he is using one of his two long fingernails to scratch the inside of his nose. He proceeds to clean the underside of his nail on the stack of napkins in the center of the table, so his boogies are there for all to see. When I think I have enough liquid courage to run, the waiter comes by and date guy flips on him because he found a tomato in his con queso dip. He proceeds to say very loudly, I cannot have tomatoes, dude, because I have irritable bowel syndrome. I wanted to pass away. Everyone was staring at us. He excused himself to the bathroom shortly after, and the waiter came flying over and said, Hey, if you need to split, don't worry, me and the girls will cover your drinks. I was so grateful, but I didn't want to be mean, so I waited. The waiter brings the check, and Mo, after patting his pants several times, says, Oh, nonsense, I forgot my wallet. Let me borrow your cell and I will call my mom and tell her to grab it off my dresser and bring it. I don't think I ever paid a check fast enough in my life. After a day, he emailed asking when we could go out again. I told him I couldn't and I didn't feel like we clicked. He called me shallow. Lalipe cunt. Story 3. Multi-level marketing. That's what it's called. Herbalife. All those products that you can sell from home and make tons of money, it's the same thing. The people who get into it have to invest their own money. With promises of multiplying it if they just recruit enough people. That's when some people get messed up up. Friends aren't friends anymore. They are potential customers. Neighborhoods become marketplaces where you can advertise for your business. For anyone who's interested in what it is, Penn and Teller did an interesting episode on it in their Bull Cow series. It's actually sad to see how these people are tricked into spending their time and money on something which is almost guaranteed to yield no profits. Edit. Since this has become the MLM subthread of this post, I figured I would share my own story, however. It is highly uninteresting. And I wouldn't bother unless you have a lot of time to terminate or are particularly interested in MLMs. The son of one of my mother's co-workers once tried to recruit me into one of these MLMs. It all started when he wanted to sell a coffee machine. This MLM was about coffee to my mother. We quickly realized that the product he wanted to sell was overpriced and impractical. Most MLM products are, by the way, they claim to be revolutionary, exclusive, and of high quality but you can almost always find cheaper alternatives elsewhere. The coffee machine he wanted to sell used pods, which work similarly to tea bags instead of normal coffee. And the pods could only be bought through this particular company. They were overpriced and you had to bind yourself to a monthly subscription. Very, very impractical and a deal breaker right there. Anyway, at that time, he made it sound like he worked for an actual store, which sold their products at potential customers' homes. It seemed strange to me, but I thought nothing of it. Two days later, I receive a call from him. He had heard through my mother in some way that I was interested in finding a job, and he tells me he might be able to help me out. I think, great, finally, and he tells me where to meet. We met inside one of the nicest hotels in Oslo, Norway, and it all came off as very professional. He asks me about myself. 
and since I have yet to receive any indication of this being an MLM, I try to impress him and so on. Then he says, You, I need you. You're the exact kind of person I need. If you're ever unsure whether someone's trying to recruit you for an MLM, just keep in mind that they will want to hire you no matter how unqualified you are for the job. I don't know what he means, but this is the point where he brings out his nice little pamphlet. It has all these nice numbers and figures which explains how it works. According to it, only 2% of potential customers currently own one of these coffee machines, and they are looking to sell to the remaining 98%. So this is the perfect time for me to join in. All MLMs will say this too. It's always the perfect time to join. They will say that their popularity is about to explode and that they wouldn't want for you to lose out on this opportunity. This is one of their main selling points. Now he goes on about how it works. You see, you aren't actually supposed to sell any products. You are supposed to recruit people to sell the products for you. Then a certain percentage of what they make goes up to you. And a certain percentage of what you get goes up to the next person, all the way up to the top. That's how you make money. The money is made through these recruitment fees, or the initial investment as they call it. I've never read about this before, but I immediately see how it resembles a pyramid scheme. And at that point, I'm just trying to get it over with. But because I hate confirmations, I just play along. He presents it all very professionally, tells me stories about 17-year-olds who make 10 grand a month. MLMs will always use these wonder stories to convince you. He tells me about this wonderful trip I will get if I manage to get over 200 people under me. It all sounds wonderful. Anyway, I tell him I have to think about it and head home. And this guy had a bachelor in flipping business management from one of the better universities in Norway. It was absurd that he would fall for it. He was considering quitting his eight. Four job to do this full time for God's sake. One week later, I receive a text from him asking me if we could have another meeting. I tell him no, using the initial investment of $1,500 as an excuse. Not that I had that kind of money. A week later, he sends me another message, but this time referring me to a web page talking about how the company was doing well on the stock market. A few days later, my mother receives another text asking if she wanted to buy the coffee machine at a reduced price. I assume he realized he wasn't making any money and wanted to sell of the products that was dusting off in his closet. It seemed like every single search engine was flooded with reviews of the companies. It seems that these companies will pay to have certain sites create hundreds of blogs with articles endorsing their products and the MLM system. Story 4? Oh boy, do I have a story. Absolute psycho girl. So, I was living in Frankfurt at the time and not getting all that much tail. Frankfurt is a very businessy place, think the city of London, so people are about as approachable as a cactus and often less attractive. It can only have been for that reason. And the reason that when I met the girl for the first time I was quite wasted, and it was quite dark in the club, that I approached her about a date the following day. So I met her at a subway station, and right away, two things bode ill. One, she was dressed in fluffy pink, as in, not an accessory, but uniformly fluffy pink clothes. Looked like a praline. Two, she was screaming at me for wasting her time, because I was about three minutes late, thereby revealing her crazy early. Should have taken the hint. Literally turned on my heel, said bye, and started walking, but she caught up, having gone from screaming mad to eerie calm and convinced me to go through with the date. I agreed. Big mistake. We went to a fairground. Her idea. Can't stand the places. First off, she wants a drink. Get her a beer, sit down on a bench. She proceeds to down her beer in almost one chug and then confess that she lost her driving license over candy and alcohol abuse. Starts sobbing heavily, then abruptly stops, looks up at me with tear-filled eyes and asks, do you think I will be all right? As in, actually expecting me to comfort her over some unknown DUI situation. She's hungry now, and I get her a fish baguette. It's Germany. We eat weird stuff, but it's actually tasty. Complains that there is no sauce, and has the poor clerk pour ketchup over salmon. By that point, I was honestly amused, and thus not greatly surprised when, within the space of 15 minutes, she proceeded to devour a Chinese stir-fry on top, followed by another swift half-liter. She suggests we go to her place. I get us a cab. As soon as we're close to city center again, I give her 10 euros and jump out of the cab to her visible indignation. She thought things went great. Proceed to delete number, ignore texts. Lesson learned. Don't compromise because you haven't gotten laid in some time. And don't date unicolor people. Turned out be entertaining for all the wrong reasons. Story 5. I have some first date doozies, but my biggest WTF moment was on a first date when I was 20 years old. I went on a 10-minute date with an acquaintance from a group I hung out with. Everything was fine until the waiter showed up. Our waiter was black. This was apparently a big deal. He did his spiel and asked for our drink order. The minute he turned to leave my date started giving me his hate-laced views on the African-American race. He zipped his mouth when the waiter returned, but the look on the waiter's face was clear. Someone had told him. 
I was horrified, mortified, and totally shocked. As the waiter started to ask for our order, I was digging in my purse. I threw a $20 on the table, told him I did not agree with anything he was saying, and was very uncomfortable and bolted for the door. He called me daily for two weeks after that saying we could go out again because he understood I was shy and just got nervous. What? Story 6. In my senior year of high school, I went on a date to see the movie Up with a girl I had been talking to for about a week. She was from a different high school, so I knew nothing about her, really. Well, I can't drive because I'm partially blind, so she picks me up at my house. On the way to the movie, she is acting crazy, and it takes me about 10 seconds to realize she is drunk out of her mind, like drunk to the point where reasoning doesn't exist. So naturally, I hold on for dear life on the swerving and bewildering drive to the theater. Already feeling uncomfortable, the movie starts, and we are surrounded by families with toddlers and young children. My genius date decides to pull out the fifth of whatever vodka she had been guzzling and chug it right there. She then proceeds to start rubbing my crotch and refuses to compromise about it. Ten seconds later, she has my banana out and she's slurping it like there's no tomorrow. Several people get up and leave immediately and the ones who don't notice are all crying over the film. I am naturally mortified. She then passes out with my flaccid banana in her mouth and her ball hanging out, snoring loud as fudge. I had to call my mother and father to drive her and her car home. Needless to say, I never saw her again. Story 7. I just remembered another one. I dated a guy from Wales for, like, three weeks. Had it not been for the accent, I would have dated him less, I'm sure of it. Anyways, it was the first real dates I went on after my fiancé passed away in a car accident about a year previous, so I was pretty nervous. I was up front with him about the fact that I had gone through a loss the year previous, but was excited to start dating again. I think he took this as a sign that I needed to be reassured. He confided in me that his first girlfriend passed away of cancer. I felt comfortable telling him about my fiancé after that. Well then, his best friend was shot in front of him by a candy dealer, and his last girlfriend beat him with a rope. And his other best friend passed away in Iraq. And his sister has a terminal illness. And he has night terrors. And PTSD. And about 15 other things that by themselves would be sad and unfortunate, but piled up started to reek of nonsense. He also won an engineering contest and got to meet the queen. He had no college education or degree and worked morning stock at Target. Every day he would tell me more and more outrageous stories about his life. I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, I really did, but at a certain point, it got to be so outrageous I asked him what his friend's name was who was shot and he said, don't do this. You don't believe me, do you? I think we should just be friends. I never heard from him again. Story 8. I'll tell one where I'm the poor date. I had been living and teaching English in China for a few years two months back in the U.S., and I was only teaching part-time at a community college, part-time at Starbucks, and living with my parents. I know, a real catch. I was on OK Cupid and met a nice girl, talented urban planner if I remember, and we talked and wanted to meet up. I had been eager to see the movie Cynic Doki New York, and it was playing at one of the theaters in Philly. I make plans to go there with some friends, and somehow, I thought it would be totally fine to invite this girl along. We meet up and go for coffee at Starbucks. I buy her coffee and we meet up with friend number one, who is chronically depressed and usually looks like he hasn't showered or changed his clothes in a week. Part of my nose this is asterisk, not asterisk the impression I want to make. I was just dumb enough to not intervene. We walk and talk and I'm enjoying her company. Especially now she's not afraid to challenge ideas we're discussing. Friends three and four show up at the theater, visibly stoned out of their minds. I don't really breathe, but I can only imagine what she's thinking. Inexplicably, I get it in my head that the right thing to do would be to let her buy her own ticket. We go in and the movie begins. I don't know if you've ever seen Cynic Dachi, New York, but it's a very bizarre movie. You'll either love it or hate it, and even if you love it, you'll find yourself laughing at some pretty dark cow. I laughed my peach off. I don't know if she laughed at all. I'm sure she did. If not at just how uncomfortable she was watching this movie with this weirdo and his band of loser friends. Anyway, movie ends. In the lobby, she says, Thanks for inviting me along. She walks on her way and, deservedly, I never hear from here again. She was really nice, quite smart, and I'm sure there were more details that made me look like a shower. She could probably tell this story from her perspective, and she would be right at home in this thread. Anyway, I look back at what a terrible date that must have been for her, and thankfully, I know I've gotten a little better in the years since. Girlfriend may not agree. Story 9. Being on OK Cupid for a few years, I have few stories. But this was the worst. There was this Marine who I was talking to, and he said his birthday was on a Sunday, and so none of his could do anything with him on his actual birthday. So he was celebrating Friday. So he was going to get a nice hotel room for himself with like a hot tub and big screen TV and stuff. I said that I was free Sunday, and I could meet up with him and buy him a birthday drink. He suggested the bar in the hotel lobby, but I made it really clear that it was only a drink, and I even was like, 
this isn't pretty woman, and he agreed. So I get there and he told me to meet him up in his room. Mistake hash two. So I go up there and the unpleasant person is in the hot tub watching flipping True Blood. Even worse, it was the episode where Eric is having boy close relationship and Bill is choking Suki while he angry fudge her. I should have just left because nothing good can happen from there, but I thought I'd try to make the best out of the situation, so I kind of just sat on the edge of the hot tub and talked to him for a while. Then he kept telling me how awkward I was making it, that I wouldn't get in with him, and that he would let me borrow one of his shirts, or that I should just go in my underwear, or... When that wouldn't work, he kept trying to playfully splash me. I kept telling him to knock it off, and then finally he said, I can't believe you are making it so awkward on my birthday. That is when I lost my cow. I was like, fudge you, I don't owe you anything. I don't even know you. We were supposed to meet downstairs, and while I was getting out, the grabbed my wrist. I just looked him in the eyes and said, don't flipping touch me. Thank God he let go. And I just ran the fudge out of there. So now I don't online date. Story 10. Now I'm impressed and entertained pretty easily. It takes a lot for me to have a bad date or judge anyone. But I went on a date with quite a rich guy about a year ago. He was nice, fit, handsome, well-educated, and well-dressed. Basically everything a girl would want. To be honest, I only went on the date because I loved how he spoke. That wording, anyway, we had a nice time, I guess. However, the whole time he spoke about himself, or tried to impress me in some way, to the point where we went to a sports store and he casually bench-pressed and whatever in front of me, claiming he wanted to test it out. He spoke about buying expensive wines and whatnot. And don't get me wrong, I love nice wine, but I had literally gotten drunk of sack wine the day before with friends. I'm not picky, and he talked about drinking $100 bottles of wine nightly. Idiot. The last straw was going to a sweet independent cafe. They got the order mixed up by a tiny detail, and he huffed like the biggest pompous. I'm never coming here again. It was kind of like, fudge, you man. I don't care if your family owns half of this city, but you treat cafes and their waitresses with respect. People fudge up. Why not spend your nightly $100 for wine on lessons on how to not be a spoilt little wanker? He then wrote a blog about how I was his muse. I never spoke to him again. Story 11. Here is a story of my worst date ever. I am 16 years old dating an 18-year-old girl. I really, really like this girl, so of course I was super nervous. It was my first date ever in my whole life. I took her out to eat, then we went to see the second Mummy movie. It was terrible, BTW. Well, everything was going great. I even had my arm around her and all that jazz. During the pygmy chase scene, one of those dudes popped up and made me jump. My arm was still around her and somehow my finger went straight in her eye. I had scratched this poor girl's eye. She then had to go to the ER and then had to wear an eye patch for a few weeks. So the first date I ever went on, I turned the girl into a flipping pirate. Believe it or not, she still went out with me a few times after that, but I think she felt bad for me. There is my dating horror story. Cheers. Story 12. Break up with boyfriend. Trying to recover from broken heart. Decide to buck up and go out on a date. Start texting and chatting with this guy. Seems a little strange, but I don't mind. What is the worst that could happen, I tell myself. He comes to get me. Seems a bit wired. I've planned an evening of tea and movies. He says he'd rather go to this party. I am very polite and I'm trying to be open-minded so I say yes. Get into his car. Funky smell. Pulls out bag of pills while driving. Explains to me that he makes his own version of ecstasy. Tells me if I don't want to try that he has other things. See collection of sweets in his car. Go to party then an after party. Feel trapped. After party everyone is getting and snorting Adderall. Feeling really anxious. Want to leave. Guy offers me candy. Get high in corner by myself. Drops me off later, asks if he can have any of my medication. Awkwardly say no. Give up on love. Story 13. A few years ago, I went camping with some friends and a few others I had never met. Upon arrival, I discovered there was something wrong with the pilot light in the camper furnace. I couldn't get it lit to save my life. Normally, this wouldn't be a big deal, but it was snowing and I had my two young children with me. Suddenly, for the sake of the story, let's call him Frank. Frank springs into action and lights the pilot explaining that he works for the gas company. Huzzah! Frank is a hero, and the weekend is a warm success. Fast forward a month or so. Frank and I have been chatting on Facebook. Nothing serious, just friendly convo. He tells me that he will be coming to my area to help one of his friends celebrate her birthday and asks me to join him. I agreed, thinking it would be fun to meet some more new people. I was newly divorced and very busy with my two kids, so a random night out was welcome. Frank lived about five hours from me then, so he had booked a hotel room. The party was in a different city from where I lived, but... Since I don't drink very often, I figured I would just stay sober and drive home late that night. The evening commenced and we were having a nice time. As it turned out, I did know another partygoer, female. She offered to let me sleep on her couch if I wanted to have a couple drinks. So I did. Frank got sloppy drunk and professed his undying love for me. I know. 
Everyone saw that coming. I tried to handle it delicately for the sake of the friendship, but he exploded. He went into this bizarre rant about how he had sold his house up north, not really rented a room, instead rented a house near me, 40 minutes away, and expected us to live happily ever after starting now. He called me all sorts of crazy things and got thrown out of the bar for his behavior. At this point, I figured I had been naive and possibly gave him reason to believe we were romantically involved, even though there was no obvious inclination in our Facebook conversations, and he would be too embarrassed to contact me going forward. Not the case at all. He was arrested that night and thrown in the drunk tank. He called me in the morning to pick him up, for some dumb peach reason I did. I brought my other friend from the party just in case. He acted like none of the crazy happened the night before and insisted we come in and see his new place. I said we could have a quick look. It gets crazier now. He had been living in this house for almost a month. Three bedrooms. Two of them were decorated and furnished for my kids. There is a lot more to this story, but I will cut it here. I now have a restraining order and I'm a lot more cautious about who my children meet. Edit. I cut the story early so I didn't annoy readers with a wall of text. However, there seems to be a bit of interest and I am without task at the moment. Part 2. The interior of the house was decorated with photos he had taken from Facebook and a few that were taken while we were camping. At this point, my friend was pretty freaked out and suggested it was time to get home to my kids. I was mid-agreement when Frank interrupted to tell me that my mom was bringing the kids over. We were going to have a family dinner. How in the hell did he get in touch with my mom? Facebook? Facebook is the root of all evil. I told him she was babysitting for me while we were out, before Crazy reared its ugly head, and he decided to message her with the invite. My friend and I tried several times to leave, without making it too obvious we were nervous, but he was adamant we stay. Frank is quite a large, muscular type, whereas my friend and I have a combined weight of about 215 pounds. We would not have been much of a match against him, especially hungover, so we stayed. I think it was about 3 p.m. by the time my mom showed up. We had been there about two hours. I showed her around the house, all the weird cow he had done. Thankfully, my mom is no dummy. I felt quite a bit more confident with her there. She deserves much credit. Naturally, I would have called her, but my cell was dead, and my friend didn't have one at all. Mama Bear showed up and saved the day. Frank was pissed and tried going after her, yelling that she couldn't keep us apart and that he'd get me and the kids back there soon. He swung a wooden coat rack at her back as she was picking up my daughter, three at the time, and knocked her down. Then she did something he didn't expect. She charged at him weaponless, yelling about what a pathetic waste he is and how he'll never forget today because she won't let him. She told my friend and I to grab the kids and run. We were already halfway out the door by then. I don't know what my mom did to him after that, but she walked out of that house very calmly and got in her car. She called the police and urged me to go home. I didn't go home. I went to the police station and called my mom from there. I filled out a statement and applied for a restraining order the same day. Frank continued to try to contact me. I changed my cell hash, moved, quit social media, changed jobs, and switched my son's school. The last one was just a precaution. It's been almost five years since that weekend, but I'll never forget. It could have been so much worse, and let me tell you, I really, really appreciate my mom. She knows it. My son still remembers bits and pieces. My daughter has forgotten blocked it. I am thankful for that. Unfortunately, no charges were ever laid because no one was actually hurt. My mom's lawyer advised against pressing charges for the coat rack incident for lack of proof. She didn't even have a bruise. All in all, my trust level is recovering and I don't fear meeting new people anymore, but I am still cautious in every situation. Thanks for listening. This is the first documentation of my story in a whole. Cheers. Story 14. Oh man, OP, I feel you. First things first, as multiple other people have pointed out, don't take it as a comment on your weight. This guy was just trying to get you involved in his pyramid scam. Odds are he had already pissed off all his family members and friends, so now he's dragging dates to these oh-no things too. The costs for the sucker that signs up for it start piling up if he can't find other people to invest, so eventually they get desperate. After he struck out on a few more dates, he probably just started stone-cold grabbing strangers off the street and trying to talk to them about these amazing seminars which means he's probably been punched at least once or twice, if that makes you feel any better, huh? I got suckered into a similar situation once. I was a third wheel at a bar with a friend and his date. It wasn't my idea. It was a double date kind of thing with a friend of hers that I agreed to as a favor. Then the girl calls after the rest of us get to the place and bails. So I'm trying to give my friend and his date their space and having a beer by myself at the bar and watching a football game on the TV, bored out of my mind. Out of nowhere, a complete knockout sits next to me and starts chatting me up. Now I'm not exactly overflowing with self-confidence to begin with, so I immediately assume there's some horrible catch. But then I tell myself, stop being so negative and flirt back. Maybe she just likes lanky dorks. We talk for a bit. I'm making her laugh. We're both flirting. 
Things seem to be going great. Then she starts telling me about some oh no thing. I think it was called Beachbody. I'm so dense at first. I think this is just some interest of hers that she is very, very asterisk, very asterisk passionate about. So I'm doing my best to pay attention until it becomes obvious that now she's just reading a well-memorized script. Eventually, it clicks for my dumb peach and I say, This is something you're trying to sign me up for, isn't it? Yes! It's a great way to build muscle mass and make a lot of money, too. You can sign up your friends and family and the benefits keep adding up. So I laugh, maybe just an asterisk bit asterisk bitterly, and say, I appreciate your effort, but I've already got a job. No thank you. Should have known you were out of my league. I'm not too bent out of shape about it. It'll be a funny story later. Not a huge deal. Now asterisk asterisk, this asterisk asterisk is where it gets bad. She apologizes, seemingly very sincerely, says something like, Oh no, I don't mean to give you the wrong impression. I came over because I was interested. Sometimes I just get a little too wrapped up in sales. Forget about that, let's talk. And because I am apparently a huge sucker for a pretty girl, I believe it. And we continue chatting. Nice conversation. We're both laughing, having a good time. I buy her another drink. She genuinely seems interested. Right when I'm ready to write off the whole pyramid scheme thing earlier as just an awkward conversation tangent and give myself a mental high five for hanging in there, she leans in close, puts her hand on my thigh again, and says, Now seriously, let's talk about Beachbody. This could be a huge opportunity for you. It sells itself. For fudge's sake, I got suckered into the same sales pitch asterisk twice asterisk. These people are cold-blooded as hell. So I tell her, apparently it doesn't or you wouldn't be trying so hard to pimp it out. Not the best comeback, but I think pretty decent for being on the spot, loudly and walk off. On the plus side, my friend and his date, who turned out to be very nice, they're still together, had a good laugh about it with me. And we spent the rest of the night watching this vulture circle the bar and try to offload her wares. I don't think she had any more success. I'd like to think I contributed to that at least. Seriously though, these people are worse than telemarkers. Story 15. The last person I dated before my fiancé was certifiably insane. He didn't believe I was at my parents, so he asterisk kicked down my front door asterisk to see if I was there. I wasn't, so he just sat on my bed eating my flipping food until I got home, because that's completely normal behavior. He went through my laptop and found a picture of another man on it. So he threw the laptop at my face, then hulked out and broke it with his bare hands. The photo was of my cousin with Down syndrome. I got a new car. He keyed it the same night. He didn't want me to go home one night, so he injected me with 70 cc of insulin. The day I left him, he showed up to the hospital I was at, as a patient due to the insulin incident, and choked and beat me. I had to have reconstructive surgery on my face. The whole time he was yelling that he was beating me so I couldn't make any more money, I model on the side, and I'd have to move in with him and his mom. He's now serving 30 years for domestic battery, theft of controlled medication, attempted murder, kidnapping, grand theft, vandalism, and unlawful imprisonment. Story 16. After my last relationship ended, I tried online dating for a while and ended up being way too freaked about the whole thing for it to actually go anywhere. I only ended up meeting like three people in several months because the idea of meeting strangers from the internet kind of freaked me out. One of them ended up being one of my totally platonic best friends though, but that's a different story. One of the guys was the sort of beardy fat hipster archetype, which is not at all my type, but he seemed nice and was taller than me. So hey, I decided to give it a shot. He was like 25 or 26 or something, and I was 19 at the time, and for our first date, we went to see The Hunger Games. It was pretty fun, not super eventful, he seemed really nice. Then a few days later, one of my favorite shows, Doctor Who, was filming in town, and I went by myself to go check it out. I had been texting him at the time, and he asked what was up, and I told him where what I was doing, and he showed up there, which kind of freaked me out. I figured maybe what I told him could have been misconstrued as an invitation, so whatever. Third date. He spent most of the time telling me how young I was and how cool it was that he was dating an asterisk teenager asterisk. Note, I do not look young. If anything, I look old for my age. That sort of freaked me out because I thought basically nothing about our age difference until he couldn't stop talking about it. Then, in the middle of my telling him something, he just sort of looked at me and said, Wow, your ball are a lot bigger than I thought they were. Note that this is on the third date, and it's not like they suddenly grew for some reason. Writing it out, it doesn't seem as skeevy as I found it at the time, but the way he talked to me was just totally condescending and awful. He ended up trying to talk me into having him over, even though I was totally uncomfortable with that, which I'd told him multiple times. And when I made it clear that he wasn't going to come over and watch a DVD, I don't even have a TV or a disc drive in my computer, I never heard from him again. Heard from him. It's not like I've never had guys want to sleep with me before. 
so I'm not entirely sure why he in particular left such a bad taste in my mouth. Story 17. Met this German guy at a university bar one night, and he seemed really into me. So he asks for my number and said he wanted to take me out on a date. Fast forward a couple of days, and he calls and asks me to go for dinner that night. I didn't know him very well at all, but I figured I might as well go for it just to see what he was like. He picks me up and says we're going to go to one of the most expensive restaurants in the city. And when I start to object and say I can't afford it, he just says, babe, you're worth it. I'm a little caught off guard at this point. Then he says we're going to make a stop first before we go to the restaurant. He takes me to the mall and we both get out and go in. He grabs my arm and makes a beeline for this really fancy leather goods store. I'm just standing there thinking what the fudge is going on. When he says, arcade liar, pick out any purse you want. I objected and said I didn't need or want a new purse. But he looks at me and says, your purse is falling apart. I don't want to take you to the restaurant with a ratty old purse like that. I just stared at him and then turned and walked away and got one of my friends to pick me up. Story 18. College days? Guy in my econ class asked me out for lunch. Yes, good. Says his car is in the shop. Can I drive? Okay. I pick him up, and on the way, he asks if we can stop at a place so he can take care of something real quick. Yes, but less good. We arrive at the specified destination, an abortion clinic where his six weeks previous one-night stander is waiting to be treated. It's okay if you want to come in, he assured me. She could probably use some girl support if you know what I mean. Meaningful eyebrow furrowing here. He didn't even have the car door all the way shut before I was escaping. For the rest of that semester in class, he flipped me off every chance he got. That part makes me laugh every time I think of it. Story 19. After I separated from my ex, I went on a hookup spree. Most of the guys I met off of OKC, they were decent. We got what we wanted from each other, and that was it. But I ended up dating this father of two for four months. He cheated on me multiple times with other guys, never admitted he was bi, even after I caught him. After we broke up, I went on one date. That ended up being what caused the end of my OKC hunting. This guy started messaging me. He was decent enough, had a nice job, a couple of cars, nice apartment. We were into the same things, so we agreed to go out on a date. A day date, on a Sunday. Whatever, I was just getting back into the dating game. Figured I would give him a chance and see where it went. The one food I absolutely hate is seafood. Seafood in any form is unappealing to me, and I've made that very, very clear, as always, but never mind, to anyone who has asked me to join them for a meal. The day of the date came, he shows up with flowers, ah, looking all spiffy with a tie, and I was dressed casually but nicely. I even wore something other than my chucks for once. He even remarked about how I cleaned up nice or something like that, which annoyed me. But whatever, I'm kind of a tomboy, and I'm used to those comments. On the way to the restaurant, he mentions that he only has four hours for this date because he has agreed to help a friend move. All right, no worries. I would just go home and play video games all night. Didn't care. I asked where we were going, and it was a surprise. Imagine my horror when we pulled up to a very popular seafood joint downtown. We. Oui. I resigned that I would get a burger and all would be well, right? Nope. As we were sitting talking, no, wait. As I was sitting there listening to him talk about himself and how much money he made and how generally awesome he was, he managed to ask what I was getting for lunch, and I said that a burger would be good since I didn't really eat seafood. Big mistake, apparently. He got really red in the face and started to berate me, like I was a child or a bad puppy. Are you kidding me? I bring you to a really nice seafood restaurant and you are getting a burger? You can get a burger anytime. Now is the time to eat seafood. I'm paying. The least you could do is eat seafood. Holy fudge. I just sat there, very scared, grew up in an abusive household starting to panic, and said, Okay, what do you suggest I get then? He ended up ordering for me, and I had the worst fish concoction I had ever eaten. I don't like seafood. It's that simple. Yes, I've tried it a lot, and I still don't like it. After the awful meal that he insisted I take leftovers home, we went to walk and talk more along a pier downtown, more talking about himself. More of him making remarks about how I'm a tomboy and how surprised he is that I wore makeup and dressed appropriately for our date. My patience was wearing thin, but he drove, so I remained pleasant. Then we get to the gift shop on the pier. As soon as we get there, he sees a girl that he knows working there, and he goes up and starts talking to her. He doesn't introduce me, so after five minutes of just standing there, awkwardly, I walked away to browse the gift shop. After another ten minutes of being horribly bored, looking at little gift shop nonsense, I hear my name being yelled across the tiny store. What? The flipping? Fudge? I can see his head above the shelves. This wasn't a big store, and the shelves only came up to my neck, so I waved. He comes over, gets red in the face again, and angrily whispers, Are you done shopping? I'm not a rude person, but I am sarcastic, and I said, 
you were so busy chatting that I thought I might look around for a bit. Plus, you didn't even introduce me, so I didn't think it would matter. That was apparently wrong also. He gets red in the face again and hisses, Oh, I bet you're one of those girls that just asterisk loves asterisk to shop, aren't you? I just sighed and said, Yep, you got me pegged. Good job. Can we go now? He insisted on walking the entire pier and talking to me the whole time. About himself, so we walked the whole pier. We were almost to the oh no car. I could see the freedom, almost taste it, and his phone rings. It's his mom. Uh, so I excused myself by pointing to the ladies room on the pier and walked in the bathroom. After I was done, I came back out. He was still on the phone, talking about the date now and how well it was going. I just walked out of earshot and called my cousin to occupy my time. Again, my attempts to occupy my time stepped onto his hurry-up time, so he was scowling when I walked back to him. Whatever. On the ride home, he grabs my hand and holds it, the whole way back to my house. I practically ran back into the house after saying bye. Story 20. When I was 19, my best friend that I worked with realized I was horribly single. And since she had just started dating a guy, and they were in the whole beginning, love-dovey part of the relationship, she figured a blind date was perfect for me. I wasn't really looking for anything, but I was broke, so a free meal sounded fine. The guy was one of her boyfriend's friends from school, and we all decided to double date. They pick me up, then drive to the middle of nowhere. I mean a dirt driveway that's two miles long and winds through the woods to a campsite with those really small campers. Trailers and mobile homes don't bother me at all. I'm from the south and see them all the time. But this one? There were huge signs out in the front yard saying, Stuff about the government is tapping into your phone conversations? Don't trust the government. The water is poisoned. Only next to the camper of the guy I was to be dating. He comes out in camo gear, like we were going hunting. Fine. Whatever. Guys wear this stuff all the time down here. He gets in the car, acknowledges me for a split second, and the rest of the drive. Never says a word to me. He talks about how powerful thunderstorms are. It was raining that night and how he wishes he could harness the power of lightning. This still didn't make me say WTF because I'm a little weird too. We get to the restaurant and get out, and he turns to me and says, I guess you expect me to pay. I say, no, I don't. I can pay for it. He goes back to not saying anything to me, and we eat. I try to make small talk, but he just stares at his plate. I'm like, okay, he must be shy. We go to the mall and go to a music store, and he puts his arm around me. And whenever there's a guy around, he pulls me in really close like I'm his territory. I hate this kind of thing that some guys do. So I push him away politely and look at some music stuff. There's a Led Zeppelin poster that I'm looking at, and the guy comes over and points to it and says, I'm buying you that. I tell him that no, it's all right, I don't need it. But he keeps insisting. He takes the poster up to the counter. I follow and tell the guy behind the counter that I really don't want the poster because I have no room for it. He ends up buying it for me anyway and then goes back to not speaking to me for the rest of the night. He didn't even say goodbye or ask me out again or even talk to me at all. The entire night was WTF, but I think he just really had no idea how to socialize with a girl. Story 21. That moment for me happened at what I thought was the end of our date. I went out with this guy that was more of a friend than boyfriend material. It was a pretty awkward date that took all day. He was ill-prepared for things he said he planned ahead of time. He was being really weird, etc. I was having a hard time feigning enjoyment. His birthday party of a mutual friend that he was also planning to attend. As we're pulling into the parking lot of my apartment building, he's saying something about part two of our date, but I'm so tired and annoyed that I don't even bother trying to figure out what that means. As I get out of the car, he hands me his leftovers from the lunch we had earlier that day and asks me to heat it up for him. I take the box up and put it in the microwave while he waited in the car, and then it dawns on me. Why can't he just heat this up himself at home? So I bring the hot food back down, hand it to him, and ask straight up, What are you doing? He proceeds to tell me that he was going to wait in his car for me while I take my nap so that he can take me to the birthday party afterward. Mind you, this party was T4 plus hours from this moment. I paused, blinked, and said, Are you crazy? He said something to the effect of no, but I've never had a girl need a nap in the middle of our date. I thought maybe you thought I was boring and you needed a break before we continue. Blah, blah. He didn't get the hint that the date, which was from morning to early evening already, was more than over. At first, I thought maybe I wasn't clear, but I'm pretty sure I'm tired, please take me home, was clear enough for this guy. I told him that the date was over, I'll see him at the party, and please don't ever think it's okay for someone to take a nap in the middle of a date. Instead, when asked to be taken home, gather that the date is over. I went back upstairs and took my nap, which ended up being a whole night's sleep, so I never went to the party. We remained friends after that for a while, but eventually I moved away and got married. And since moving away, we haven't really kept in touch. Story 22. Not as bad as all of yours, 
I set up a date with a dude he lives about an hour south of here and is a friend of a friend. It was a give me a call after work on Friday kind of thing, and we'll hang out. Well, Friday night comes and I wait and wait and never hear from him until he texts me at like flipping 11.30 p.m. wanting to come over. Tons of excuses. Got into town late yada yada. Whatever I look past it. He was cute and knew it could at least be a fun hookup, so I say whatever come over. We hang out that evening at my place, have some fun, not mind blowing. Fast forward a week and he's texting a little and asks if I want to hang out. I said sure and again he's vague on the time but says we'll meet for dinner when he gets into town. I say sure and of course same flipping thing. I decide to go out and meet some friend because I'm not waiting around again for this dude and I don't hear from him until way late, almost midnight again. He texts and this time I say I'm not available and he doesn't understand why but really wants to see me. And can we hang out tomorrow night since he's in town all weekend? I just flat out tell him, listen, I don't want to make plans because this is twice in a row you call me at midnight when we had plans earlier. Of course, he gets all defensive and says, we never had firm plans and something came up. A lot of bull. I tell him, listen, I'm nobody's plan B and calling me at midnight when we have dinner plans isn't sending a good message. His only response was, oh, so I'm an unpleasant person now? Silence on my end. I never heard from him again. Story 23. I had just moved to a new town and didn't know anyone, so after a few weeks put up a profile on an online dating site. I met this one guy who was picture book perfect. He was 6'8", former baseball player who got hurt playing, and from his injury developed a medical device to help heal him, and it's now sold all over. Anyway, we met up and he was gorgeous. He took me to the zoo, and every time we would pass a place that sold ice cream or candy, he would ask if I wanted some. I didn't think much about it at the time. After we left the zoo, we went to dinner at an Indian restaurant. When our meal was over, he kept asking if I wanted dessert, which I politely declined. He takes me home, quick kiss on the cheek, and says, I hope to see you again. Well, later that night, he starts texting me saying, you know what my likes and interested are? And I was like, WTF? He kept saying I should eat more desserts and that he thought stretch pants were alluring. I said, stretch pants? And he said, yes, I'm sure you could find a local restaurant to help. I am so confused at this point, feeling like I'm in the twilight zone, so I sent a text saying, I'm so confused. What are your likes and interests? He replied, I guess you could say I have a belly body expansion interest. Gaining weight, whoever it may be, is a turn on. I want to watch you grow intellectually and psychologically. I got the text, read it, and sat for a minute. Is this for real? He wants to see me get fat? So I quickly replied, You left out physically unpleasant person. I couldn't believe what was happening and kept looking at my phone in disbelief. He kept texting, so finally I asked if he was serious and he said, Yes, it's a close relationship fetish called feederism. Google it. And, and that was the last time we spoke. I'm apologizing for any typos and grammar mistakes as I typed this from my phone.